new treatment is offering hope for people with pancreatic cancer. The cancer is notoriously difficult to treat. Experts estimate that this year nearly 57,000 Americans will be diagnosed and more than 45,000 will die. It is the third leading cause of cancer-related deaths in the U.S. and is set to become the second in 2020. Two new papers out in the journal, Nature Medicine, outline a technique that causes cells to self-eat. It makes pancreatic cancer cells reliant on energy source, then starves them of it. Dr. Kirsten Bryant, who was the lead scientist on one of the studies, joins us from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And Julie Fleshman, the president and CEO of Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, or PANCAN, the organization that funded the study, joins us from Manhattan Beach, California. Both lost their fathers to pancreatic cancer and are devoted to researching the disease. Ladies, thanks to both of you for being with us. Kristen, if I can begin with you, explain for us in layman's terms the treatment strategy you outline in these papers. Sure, so pancreatic cancer is driven by a mutation in the KRAS oncogene. So what we were interested in doing was targeting the KRAS pathway. We don't have a drug that targets KRAS directly, so we target the biological processes that KRAS regulates. So by targeting one of those, we found that that increased the pancreatic cancer cell's reliance on a specific nutrient pathway. And when we targeted that pathway in combination, we could um, synergistically kill the pancreatic cancer cells by basically starving them of all their ways to get food. So is this treatment then potentially for anyone with pancreatic cancer or more specific types? It's potentially for almost everyone. So over 95% of pancreatic cancer patients have a KRAS um, mutation, and we believe that this treatment would be for anyone who has a KRAS mutation. And Julie, what makes pancreatic cancer so difficult to treat? So your pancreas is located deep in your abdominal cavity. The symptoms for pancreatic cancer are quite benign, and there is no early detection strategy for the disease. So usually by the time it's diagnosed, it's late stage, it's already metastasized or spread to other organs, and it's very difficult to treat at that point. It's true that there are no ways to catch it early. Is that being studied, perhaps ways that it can be caught a little earlier? Absolutely. There are many research studies going on around the country to try to discover biomarkers for the disease as well as an early detection strategy. But we definitely need more research efforts and research funding dedicated to pancreatic cancer, both for early detection and for new treatment options as Dr. Bryant is working on. And Kirsten, speaking of these studies that are now out, what happens next? I mean, obviously more research needs to happen, but when can this be sort of rolled out as a, as a practice? Sure, so it's currently being evaluated in clinical trials. There's one clinical trial that's already open out of the Huntsman Cancer Institute at the University of Utah. Um, we will be opening a clinical trial in the coming months in collaboration with MD Anderson Cancer Center. And so what we really need is to see the validation in patients next. So who then is eligible for the clinical trial if someone is interested? Right, exactly. So certainly before enrolling in a clinical trial, you can go to clinicaltrial.gov to see more information about the trials and consult your physician. However, broadly, it's pancreatic cancer patients who have a KRAS mutation and who have already tried one of the available first-line therapies and failed that therapy. So Julie, what could this research then mean for the fight against pancreatic cancer overall? Pancreatic cancer patients need more options, and this is another option in their arsenal. Um, we encourage patients to consider clinical trials at diagnosis and throughout their entire treatment journey. And a great place to find those resources and information is at pancan.org and through our Patient Services Center. We have a call center where patients and families can call in and we can do an eligibility search to find trials that they may be eligible for, including the trials that Dr. Bryan is talking about. This is an issue you know, that is personal for so many people. I recently had a close friend who lost her mother to pancreatic cancer. You both lost your fathers to pancreatic ca cancer. What is your message to those who are currently fighting or have a family member fighting this disease? 
Kirsten, you you first. Sure. Um, so I would say uh, that the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network is a great resource for someone who is recently diagnosed. It was one of the first places my family went to upon my dad's diagnosis. And I just think that they should look into all the potential options that they have through that website. Julie, what, what would your words be to those struggling with it or who have a family member struggling with it right now? Yes, there are options, so please make sure that you're informed and understand all of your options so you can make an informed decision. And we need people to join our movement. We need more volunteers. We need donors helping to fund the interesting research and making discoveries like Dr. Bryant. And if you want to learn more about how you can get involved, you can go to pancan.org. All right, Kristen Bryant and Julie Fleshman, thanks to you both for all you're doing fighting this disease and for being with us today. And for anyone who's interested in learning more, you can visit pancan.org.